When Vandiyadeva awoke again, he was astonished by the sight before and around him. The sun was rising on the eastern horizon. There the sea became a sea of molten gold. Yudhayakumari shined with golden bangles. In front of him, in the direction the boat was going, an emerald island was visible, wrapped in blue sea. On the right side another similar green-colored earth area was seen. It is not clear whether it is an island surrounded by sea on all four sides or a vast expanse of land. Looking through the two emerald territories in the distance many more such islands could be seen exemplifying the various combinations of green. Looking around from the boat, there were seven colors of the rainbow and its seven thousand mixed colors. All in all, the scene did not appear to be a real scene before the eyes. A master painter said, here I show you what heaven looks like. That vow seemed like a colorful painting miracle. Vandiyadeva, who was oblivious to this sight, said, This is not heaven, this is Sri Lanka. The words fell and jolted him awake. Yes. It's true what I suspected was heaven. Vandiyathevan said. This is not a paradise earth, but a heaven-like earth. For a long time, monsters in human form have been trying to make this heaven a hell, said Punguzali. Who are you calling monsters? He said. Those like you whose business is war. Bonnie's Selver too. Why are you asking me about him? Did you say you were going to inquire about the prince? I told you to investigate where he might be. Didn't you say to find out if he was human, demon or god? The boat was approaching the islands. Instead of the humming sound of the sea, the sound of waves crashing against the shore began to be heard. What do you mean? You can see it in front, that's the Dragon Island, and to the right is the Dragon Island. Wherever you go, let's take you to the Dragon Island and drop you off. Are you going to inquire? No, let's go to Goblin Island. It's better to find out where the prince is, even if it's a little late. Well then, remember your promise to me. The boat stopped at the shore of the small island. After telling Vandiyathevan to take care of the boat, Pung Lai went inside the Emerald Island. Vandiyathevan saw the direction she went. She soon disappeared among the green trees. Vandiyathevan was the first to think about Boda Island becoming Maravip Bhutadeva in the words of the people. Then he thought what kind of goblin would be the goblin that now resides inside Ativa. Then he wondered what could be the secret hidden in the soul of this amazing woman. As Punguzali said, she came back in a Najagai. She asked Vandiyathevan to board the boat. The boat went towards Nagatiwa. Have you been able to find out the matter by inquiry? Valavarayan asked. Prime Minister Aniratha Brahmariar has come to Matadam to see Pani's son-in-law. The prince must have also come to Matadam yesterday. I don't know how long he will be in Matadam. You can go there and find out, said Pungjalai. How far is Matatam from here? It will be five or six miles away. All the way is one forest. Don't think it will be like a million acres of forest. It is a dense forest with trees reaching to the sky. It will be dark in some places during the day. There are herds of elephants and other mischievous animals. You must be careful when approaching. If there was only a wicked woman like you to show the way in the forest. Valavarayan breathed a sigh of relief. Then what are you one for? Give me the straw. I'll take it myself. No, I can't. I'm talking like some mad woman. I can't do it. Didn't you agree with the younger brat? You must finish it. She said. But Pungujali. I will finish it. I will not give it even if someone else begs for it. Have you helped so much? That's enough. The boat was approaching Nagad Weep. Punguzali's hands were aching as usual for the paddle. But it was clear from her face that her soul was wandering somewhere else in the dream world. Sea Maiden. Call Vandiyadeva, she startled and came to this world. Why did you call? She asked. Something told me to look forward to the retribution. It's telling now. It's approaching the shore. Bungujali did not immediately refuse, seemed to think. 
so Vandiyadeva took courage and said more. He said, You have helped me tremendously. You have not only helped me, you have helped the Chola Empire as well. You have helped the clan of the Chola Emperor. If I do not do something in return, my mind will not rest. Are you telling the truth? Or are you lying like other men in the world? Samadra Rajan swears to know. You mean I write it in water? I command Akhazavani, Bhumadavi, Ashtadika Balakar and Surya Chandra to know. I do not believe in your truth and command. Do lying liars fear only truth and command? I tell you because I thought you were good the first time I saw you. The first impression is always the best. Don't change it. After looking at Pani's Selvara and giving him the leaf, and having said all that needed to be said and said all that needed to be said, when he had time to spare, he said, Do you remember Samadra Kumari? Ask. If he says, There is a memory, say, She is the one who brought me the boat and dropped it in Sri Lanka. Flower. Are you flying that high? Can a little sparrow begin to fly with Garuda, the king of Kagana, saying that I will also go to the aerodrome? Is it not good for you? Thus Vandiyadeva thought in his mind. Frankly, did you hesitate so much to say this? I thought you were going to ask something big. I must tell the prince. Even if he doesn't ask, I will tell myself. He said. Oh no! Don't say anything if he doesn't ask. I can't do that, I'll just say it. What do you say? I will tell it as it happened. Prince! Pawnee's lover! Don't you remember Samadra Kumari? If you don't remember, remember now. She was the one who saved me from the murderous men of Pulvatarayar. She herself pushed the boat and brought me to Sri Lanka. She saved me from falling into the sea and put me on the boat. If not for Samadra Kumari's help I could not have come alive and seen you. You won't even get this straw. I'll say that, right? That's right so far, don't add anything else. Don't tell him I told him all this. Chedge. Did you think I was completely crazy? If the prince has any answer to it, tell it to me as it is. Do not add or subtract. Where will I see you again? What's the trouble in seeing me? I'll be on Kadakare or on this giant island, or on a boat between the two. Would you like to come this way on your way back to town and see if you're on Goblin Island? You must not come within the island on any pretext, if you do, it will be disastrous. See if this boat is at sea. If so, make some sign and make a noise. I shouted like a quill yesterday, can you shout like that? Can't cry like a quill? But I will make a noise like a peacock. Listen to this. Vandiyathevan covered his mouth with his hand and screamed in a hoarse voice like that of a peacock. Pungazalai laughed cheerfully after hearing that. The boat approached the shore of Nagat Island. Both got off the boat. Vandiyathevan got on the shore and took leave. Punghuali turned the boat. Vandiyathevan looked back with strength. Saying I'll come with you and she won't come too? There was still a little desire in his mind. But Punghuali did not notice him. Her face showed that she had wandered off into a dreamland by then.